This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz wearing his pork pie hat. To make, that's right. To make me feel because it's a different episode. Because since I wear a lot of hats, uh, I would, you know, I would really I could use one. But I'm wearing my Chinese communist hat. I like. Yeah, it. I noticed. Yeah, I love this hat. I really love it, and it lasts a long time too. So the Chinese make good. Hat. I bought it in China. Did you really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where were you in China? Uh, back about 10 years ago, Marjorie and I went out because her company was having their annual meeting. So we went out for two two weeks. She was there for a couple of days for the meeting. And then they put us up in a lovely apartment. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and then we did things like go down to up down to Gulen, which is where all these beautiful mountains are and so on. And we had a good time, you know. The best thing I got, <clears throat> I wish I had it here, I'd show it to you. Is and it was very popular there. Was a shirt of a of a Chinese soldier. Only the face is Barack Obama. <laughs> and I thought it was a great, just a great. I won't wear the T-shirt anywhere because right. people will like come up to me and give me a bad time. Or maybe they'll say, "Where the hell did you get that T-shirt?" You know. Right. I'd like to get one. Yeah. So anyway, how you doing, Stephen? I am doing fine, Alex. Have you been doing your skits and sketches at all? I have not done my skits and sketches recently. Yeah, yeah. You really should probably do more, you know, because, you know, you you, you know. Where is that? What's that noise? Um, you, 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 well, let me turn you down a second and bring it back up. There we go. Now that's fine. Um, uh, that if you don't do it, you lose it, don't you? I mean, you get rusty. Yeah, yeah. Um, how 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 rusty do you feel up there? I mean, do you feel like awkward? Yeah, I feel like you, you know you forget. You know, it, the idea is you tell a story and there's jokes on the way to the story, and then the story then the, there's the big payoff at the end, mm-hmm. and you forget some of the little nuances. You forget, you know, to hit certain words and to right. Like, you, you leave out parts of it, you forget, and you try to bring it back in, and it, it just gets to be a mess. Yeah, well, because I, um, um, yeah, I, w- I would be bad at comedy that way, because I'd start go- telling that story leading up to the story. Right. And then when I got to the story, after leading up to the story, I would say, now where was I? What was I going for here? What was the, what was the punchline? Because <laughs> that happens all the time to me now. Where I'm talking on the thing with people, and then I'm, I mean, you tend to uh, extrapolate, you know, to build a lot of more f- around something you're about to say, right? You right. Know, you know what I'm talking about. And then I will get to the thing I was going to say, and I have to go, what was I talking about? <laughs> you know? So I've, I've done that. I've, I've lost my train of thought in the middle of a thought. Well, wait till you get to be my age. You know, I got a feeling I'm going to get there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so well, I told you. Uh, yeah. Longevity runs in my family. It, longevity runs in your family. How old? On one side of my family. One side of my family dies really young. Yeah. And one side of my family just won't die. Oh, I see. Okay, and the ones who won't die, how old are they? Well, my grandmother was 104 when she passed away. No shit. And my grandfather was 102. Well, she must have nagged him. <laughs> no, they, they, they passed away for like uh, within months of each other. But my, oh, of course. My, my grandmother always lied about her age because when she, when she was a when she was a, a little girl, mm-hmm. the, the the woman was never older than the man in a relationship. Okay. 
All right. Right back in the early parts of yeah. last century. Yeah. We're talking the early, you know, the yeah. beginning of last century, not not this century. What? My mother was older than my father, I think. Yeah. Yeah, my grandmother was older than my grandfather. Yeah. So, yeah my my dad passed away at ninety two, but my mother passed away at forty seven. My nephew passed away at twenty two. So that side of the family doesn't have longevity, and right, wow. and one side of the family just won't die. Well, I, my mother died at at a hundred plus, right? You know, um, so that's it's getting up there with your grandmother. It's a hundred and four, but a hundred and four is you know, it's quite remarkable. That's very remarkable. Well, I don't know. You know, everybody goes, oh, "I'm a hundred and four, and everybody applauds, right? right. Yay! And you go. I don't know what they're applauding for because it's no great skill to get to be 104. You just have to keep breathing. Right, right, right. You, you just have to keep waking up in the morning. And I'm sure if you asked your grandmother at 104 or your grandfather at 102, to what do they attribute their long life? Did you ever ask them that, by the way? No. They would probably... Well, when they, when they you know, first they were all there. And then all of a sudden, like in a in a beat, my grandmother had dementia. Okay, how old was she when dementia happened? Probably about a hundred. Is it dementia or just old age? You know, I mean, right, there, there are people who don't have dementia. I mean, there was a, a, a Lloyd, um, a, 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 what was his name? Uh, who's an actor? Who the guy who fell off the Statue of Liberty in in uh, the Hitchcock film, uh, Sabotage or Saboteur, and um, Norman Lloyd, he lived to be like I think it was a hundred and seven. Oh wow! Uh, oldest living actor in the Screen Actors Guild, and not getting insurance anymore because <laughs> of, of what they did to us. Okay. But he lived to be, I think, maybe 104, 105. I can't remember, 107. It was a lot, okay? And to his death, he was doing interviews and was pretty alert. You know, didn't have, didn't have dementia at all. Right. Um, which, by the way, dementia, the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's is dementia is just your brain isn't working well, okay? Um, uh, Alzheimer's is a medical condition uh, that contains that contains dementia. It's just that it's a medical condition. Uh, it, it, it they they can med attribute it medically to things. Uh, dementia is just something we all get as we get older. You know. Oh, really? In varying degrees. In varying degrees. My mother had it. Uh, but it wasn't, it didn't become really profound till she was about 96, mm. you know. Um, Did she get mean? No. My grandmother, all five foot four of her, I mean four foot eight of her, yeah. my grandmother was four foot eight. Really? My grandfather was barely five foot. They didn't just shrink with age. You know, I think that's a fan, I think that's, I think that's uh I think that's nonsense. I don't think you shrink with age. I thought I was shrinking, and I met, I had myself when I went to the doctor the last time. I measured myself, and I'm the same height I was since I was 18. I mean, the reason you sh do shrink a little bit is your your bones, especially your spine and so on, start to compress. Right. You know, and you get you get shorter than you were. I think I'm a little bit shorter than I was. Right, just a little bit yeah. though. Yeah. yeah, it's not a lot. You know. Um, and, uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, you, 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 I say I'm about to forget what I was saying, my train of thought. Uh, we we're talking about the age and the and, well, my mother, my mother was, uh, didn't really get dementia till 96 or so. And then I had her in the old people's home. I remember this, the old folks home, the Jew, old, the Jewish old folks home. Right. And uh, the Jewish, what is this? Oh, no. Hold on a second. Call me later. I'm doing something. 
Uh, this guy keeps having trouble. Let me just turn off this phone so it doesn't ring. I hate it when that happens. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so you're getting older. Dementia. Oh, my mother, when she was in the old folks home, the Jewish old folks home, Jewish home for the aged. She asked me right. why. One day she asked me why she was there. I said two reasons. You're Jewish and you're and aged. You're and you're aged. <laughs> anyway, she really had full on dementia. So I, at the same time, was starting to come out to New York because I was trying to find work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I told her, Mom, I won't be here for a couple of weeks. Although I shouldn't have even told her this because she wouldn't, she wouldn't know I was gone. Right. Okay. I could come back up to uh, two years later and she'd say, oh, good. I'm glad you're coming to visit me again today. Right. You know. My grandmother, I had yeah. to remind her who I was. Well, I said to my mother, I said, and I've learned a lesson out of this. I said, I'm going to New York for a couple of weeks. And my mother said, well, when you're there, say hello to my parents. Now, of course, mm -hmm. her parents were dead you know, how many years earlier, okay? Right. So I said, Mom, your parents are dead. That would be your natural reaction too, to say something like that. Right. She started going into hysterics. My parents are dead? And she started crying and weeping and moaning and everything like that. Like she heard it for the first time. Yeah, so I learned you never say anything that to her, like that to her again. If she right. names a friend, says, go see my, my friend Fran. I, okay. I, okay, I'll see her when I'm there. I'll say hello. You know. I'll say hello. You know. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, uh, that, that was when I realized she was gone. You know. And uh, then uh, she decided, the way she died, she just decided to stop eating. Is that right? Yeah. I think she went over a hundred and decided, okay, I went over the finish line. That's enough. Yeah, that's enough. You know, I mean, but um, and also, I mean, she was, you know, she was in in the scene. Uh, the, the Jewish old folks home in San Francisco is like getting your kid into Harvard. I mean, oh, that it's, right? it's a great place to be. In fact, that's where Will Durst was, but he not be, he was in like the medical section for. You know, right. people who had had a stroke. So, I mean, it was really something. Our friend, he did, you know, he did this thing uh, on He Bit did a podcast, didn't, didn't he do a podcast recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will and Willie, Will and Willie? Yeah, yeah. And I was wondering how they're going to do it. They got a, they got a, a cab and a cab with a wheelchair access, and it took him there, and then he sat there and did what he could do, and then he left, you know. Yeah, I wish I could have heard it. Huh? I wish I could have heard it. Well, you can go online if you, can, you just go to YouTube. Really? And put in Will and Willie. Search for Will and Willie, and you can see it. Yeah. The, hmm. li the live version was not very good because they had problems with the signal, which if they had asked me to help them on it, it wouldn't have happened that badly. Right. But they, but they then later put up the video they had of it, and so that was clean. And you know, Will was okay, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, hey, you know, he's, he's, it's been three years, okay? Right. You know, it's not like he's had a chance to say, uh, you know, get up on stage in a wheelchair and do his act. So. Well, uh, maybe that's the next step. Maybe this podcast, you know, if he gets relaxed enough, are they gonna do it every week? No, 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 no. This was done as a fundraiser for Will. So, oh really? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but you know, they used to do podcasts occasionally years ago, and you know. So anyway, it was it was it was good to see him do it. Okay, right. It was good to see him get out and do it. Uh, I think that gives him a great deal of energy to to get better. You know, but yeah, I, no kidding. I, I really think he should be home. Is my point. You know. Nobody listens to me. They would need a nurse 24-7. Well, I don't know if they would. You know, I mean, that's uh, uh, it's questionable. You know, but I just think that 
if you've got something like that and you you're not home, by the way, my uh, my j shorts are creeping up on me. Thank you. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Well, you know, you have these problems. Uh, any, anyway, uh, where, where was I? Oh, yeah. Your shorts were creeping up on you. My shorts That's were creeping were. up on me. Well, what was I talking about? See? Well, Will going home. Will going home. If he, if he goes home, if were to go home, he might get better a lot faster. You know, that feeling of being in your own surroundings, being at home, there's a comfort to that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, yeah. But I'm not a doctor, so I don't know the. What right, to do. right. All I know is I'm sitting around here waiting for my stroke. So you know. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I already had one. I had a minor stroke. I told you. A, a mini stroke. Right. But well, did you feel it? Did it do anything to you? What happened? I fell down. I couldn't get up. You just collapsed. You get. You get I just fell. Hmm. Just collapsed. Hmm. Wow. And then what happened? And then I couldn't get up, and then finally I was able. To, it passed, and I was able to get up. But my right hand is completely numb. To this day. To this day. Wow. So you you had a mini stroke. Did you how, right. did you go to a doctor about it so that they? No. Then how do you know it was a mini stroke? Because my hand is numb. Well, no, but that could be neuropathy. I have neuropathy. I, I have neuropathy in my feet. My feet are numb all the time. Yeah, me too. I have neuropathy in my feet. My feet burn. They, uh, they burn? Mine they, don't burn. Mine are just really numb. And sometimes they hurt. They ache a little bit. Right. Does it feel like you're walking? By the way, folks, well, welcome to old people podcasting. Okay. Because this is what you talk about. Does it feel like you're walking in ski boots? No, it feels like I'm walking in socks all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if that's the same as ski boots. But, yeah. No, ski boots, are, you kind of walk like Frankenstein. Really? And you have that in both your feet? Both my feet. Well, that's neuropathy. You should go uh -huh. see a neurologist about that. He can give you the same medication I'm taking, and then you can forget everything. No, I take it. What? I think gabapentin. Gabapentin? Okay, did you have any side effects? No. Really? But I only take 75 milligrams in the morning and 75 milligrams when I go to bed. That's uh, not a lot for, for no, how much gabapentin. Do you take? Well, I'm taking pregabalin, which is... Right, that's what I take, pregabalin. Oh. Pregabalin, blah, it's, lady. Well, well, yeah, it's a Jewish term. Uh, it's a Jerry Lewis term. Right. Pregabalin. Uh, I take um, I take fifties uh, or a hundreds. In fact, in the house I have a hundred and fifties, hundreds, and and fifties. And how often do you take them? Uh, I've tried not to take them at all. Uh, because what happens is it makes me clumsy to begin with. I get clumsy, and um, it it causes me to like. If I'm doing stuff here like I have to start recording, for instance, I have to push a button to start recording, I have to think for a moment, how do I do that now? Right. Where it's something I do every day, you know. So uh, I, I, I got to the point where I didn't want to take it. So the last couple of days I took it the hundreds twice because it's a nice little high, you know, it's, it, makes you, it makes me feel better. But I took it, uh, the other day, and then I slept on it, and I woke up, and I took a walk, and I was lightheaded. I, you know, got a little woozy at one point. It's, it's not, it's not a drug that I do well with. You know. Yeah, I take it every day, and I have no side effects. Well, if I, when I took it every day, I had no, not a lot of the side effects like lightheadedness and so on, but I did have memory problems. You know, so I didn't like that. Made me, made me feel uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. So, what the hell? But you, so you, right. so you take pregabalin. We take the same drug. That's right. We're drug buddies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, and do you take it religiously every every day? Every morning and every evening. Wow, seventy-five. Hmm. 
Well, I took 50s. 50s were a little lighter, you know, didn't cause me as much problems. Right. But my doctor said to me, if you can, don't take it at all. You know, he, he said, uh, uh, because I was taking hundreds and he went, maybe it's a little high for you. So he lowered me to 50, you know. But he gets once a day? Once a day, yeah. Mine say three times a day, but that's only because I told him, give me a triple dose of it. You know, oh, okay. So if I need to take 100, I can take 250s. Right, you know, right. So. I know that if I, if I run out and I don't take it, my feet really act up. Really? Mine don't get that bad. but my, it, Mine get very uncomfortable. You know, some days if I take it, I'm, it makes me peppier and I can take a good walk. Okay, and other days, like the other day, I took it, and man, it was I was lightheaded throughout the whole process because I had taken it the night before. So I don't know, but anyway, folks, this is what old people talk about. You can all go about doing whatever you're doing. Come back huh. here in about uh, five minutes, and we'll right, we'll, right, we'll be through. nothing to see here, folks. Mind nothing your business. See. Just old people starting to discuss. He and he's not as old as I am. You're you're how old now? You're sixty seven. 66. 66, okay. Yeah, so you're 15, 16 years younger than me. And you're talking about the same stuff I am. Good luck, friend. Yeah, no kidding, huh? You know? I didn't start I didn't start having problems till I started going to doctors. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And, you know, my doctor goes, hey, you're taking, uh, you're taking, uh, your, your blood pressure's a little high, take this. Your, um, Cholesterol's a little high. Take this. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Before I know it, I'm like throwing a, it's like throwing a mouthful of jujubes in my mouth every morning. Right. You know? Right. So it. it jujubes, do they still make those? I hope so. That's my favorite candy. That's my go to candy. Is it really? Yes. I love jujubes. I haven't seen them in years. Oh, I, I know. I can take you down to a, uh, a candy store. Here in New York, where you can oh, buy that's them. different. You Candy can, store would you, have wait a minute. You can buy them by the pound. I used to get myself like two pounds of jujubes, and I'd sit here eating them all day. You know, I love jujubes. All right, settle down. And when Easy. I was when I was a kid, I, they had jujubes. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, jujubes have been around ever since I went to movies. And we love jujubes because not only could you throw them in your mouth and they taste good. Okay, but you could throw them at the screen too. <laughs> uh, and and with jujubes, they, you could take there were two of them, and I put them together and put them in my mouth, and then eat them stuck together. I had a little way, a little <laughs> regimentation with my jujubes. I feel better about myself. Yeah, you feel better about yourself. What do you mean? That's right. Yeah, well, did you ever, did you, what was your candy of choice? What was the one as a kid you would, you would literally kill your parents for? What was mine as a kid? I think it was bubble gum. Bubble gum? That, that, that's not a candy. Didn't you have some kind of candy like Malt balls or something like that. Oh, I remember moth balls. Malt balls, Mal not moth balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're listening, folks, don't try and eat moth balls, okay? <laughs> but you mean ma uh, malt balls? <laughs> I love yeah. my, I love malt balls. They yeah, were, they were good too. And I liked um, red hots. You like Red Hots? I never liked Red Hots. And I liked uh, Atomic Fireballs. Oh, you like you like hot candy is what you liked. Right. I like sour candy, too. Oh, sour candy, yeah. You know what I liked? Remember Jawbreakers? Oh, yeah. You put them in your mouth and they last all day. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. And uh, and every now and then you pull them out and see how much smaller they had gotten. <laughs> yeah, you put them back in. Anyway... Oh, jeez. My mom's favorite candy was Jordan almonds. My mother loved those. I, she, My mother loved them, too. Is that right? Yeah, and they were pretty good. I don't know if you ever had any. Yeah, I've had them. But they tasted great, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was kind of considered a fancy candy. 
Yes, very fancy. Very, very, very fancy. A fancy candy. A fancy candy. Well, listen, we're running out of time here. This is always a pleasure talking to you. I, I you have no. It goes idea. by so quick. It goes by quick, and uh, uh, and and of course, it's nice to hear from somebody who's a, a fellow pregabalarian. <laughs> pregabalarian. Did I just make a word up there? Yeah, you did. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Say goodbye, Stephen. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Okay, thanks to Stephen Kravitz, and we'll see him in a couple of weeks because next week we're, we're not on on Thursdays, and uh, we're not on next Friday either. So, Because it's Thanksgiving, you know, we take our little time off and enjoy ourselves and try and, uh, uh, well, anyway... How are you? Hello, everybody. Boy, I feel tired today. I, I don't know. I'm just, I, uh, but you know, what happens is I turn these lights on and all of a sudden it wakes me up, you know, and I go crazy. Anyway, uh, we only have one person waiting to come on here. And, you know, uh, if I don't see a few more in a couple of minutes, that's it for tonight for me. Uh, and it'd be fine with me because I can just, you know, Go in the other room, lie down, wait for Jack's show to be through, then wait for another hour till Jack solves all his technical problems. And, uh, yeah, he had me up late last night. Uh, uh, and we, but we solved the problem. Uh, I, I solved it. Uh, he just, he couldn't, he couldn't get the, uh, uh, onto our uh, thing here, our, uh, um, our, what do I call it? Our, our server here. And so uh, I, uh, I went on to his, uh, his machine. I have the ability to go to his machine. And I got on to his machine. And I just went, blah, 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 and we're all taken care of. So uh, that's how I solve problems around. I'm just a big problem solver, right? Okay. Gosh, I look healthy, don't I? I, I, just, I just don't feel healthy. I don't know what it is. I just, I think I'm just, I think I'm exhausted. I think I'm getting to be a tired old person or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, I think it's time to bring in what few people are waiting to talk to us tonight. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Let me uh, switch to the Zoom panel. And there we are. What's all that noise in the background? Is that you, Jeff? Yes. It's Pam and her sisters. Oh, they're the wild sisters who've come over, right? Yeah. Are they doing a lot of drinking? Uh, I think they were, but I think they're ready to go to sleep. Oh, okay. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> uh, don't you love it? Don't you just love it? Oh, boy. Anyway, um, so, and hello to... Um, to um, but they saved me today. Huh? They what? They saved me. What do you mean they saved you? My car got stopped running. It stopped running. Well, how did? They, yes. Well, they're not mechanics, are they? No. <laughs> but they called the uh, what's it called? Triple Triple A. Triple A. Three A's. Yeah. Uh, reason battery. Yeah, it got overloaded because I think I left the light on someplace. Oh, I see. You left the light on. Wait a minute. You left uh, yeah. the lights on in the car, what, overnight? Huh? Oh, no, it was just a couple of hours. You know what I never figured out is why, because we all know that if you leave the lights on in the car, okay, yeah. the, the, the battery will die. Why it doesn't after like about, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes of not really actually running down the road or being turned on. Yep. Why do they just turn off? Well, I would think so, but probably it didn't. Yeah. Uh, they, they have so many sophisticated things to keep them on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, anyway. And nothing sophisticated to turn them off, right? Nah, not really. Hello, Alan. Hello, Alex. 
Hi, <laughs> Jeff. You look like you might have had a few cocktails, too. Well, yeah, I've had a few. Okay. I could go for more. The girls, usually when you get a bunch of women together, they all drink. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, do, do, does everybody drink? I know you never. What, us? Yeah. Me and my sister, so we drunk? No, but do you drink? We drink like fish. Like fish. See, I told you. Here. My, my wife, whenever she's with her girlfriends, uh, you know, I don't drink. That's it. I just don't drink. I never have drank. I don't drink now. I, you know, I just never, I, 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 people say, why don't you drink? And I go, I don't drink for a very simple reason. I don't like the taste of the stuff. There you go. You know? I have a friend who, who was an alcoholic and he does not drink at all. But his wife will, like, go crazy. Well, you know what happens with me is a lot of people thought I was an alcoholic. Because I would go to a party and they would say, well, what do you want to drink? I had Coca-Cola. Give me a Coke. Give me a, a Diet Coke. Whatever. Yeah. They, and they go, oh, okay. And then oh, yeah. the rumor You're got around that I was, you know, I was a member of AA or whatever. <laughs> In fact, not I, NA though. Narcotics is anonymous. What? You, you were not a member of Narcotics Anonymous, though. No, no. You were an active member. Yeah. So well, you want you want you want a Coke or you want a line? I'll take the line. Yeah. No, but you know you know what uh, the um, um, uh, my friend my friend Bob Rubin. Uh, oh boy, it said noises. I I, I may have to. Well, if so I you lose figure you, out how I can put myself in in uh, sound. Yeah, how to mute? Plus. Well, you you <laughs> have muted in the past. I know. I don't know why I was. Well, oh, do you yeah. have do you have your uh, your uh, Zoom there? Go into a different room. The, but, but no, but the Zoom. You have your Zoom there. Oh, you see, you just turn your mic off. Yeah, there we go. There just, you go. You know. Okay, and just turn it on when you got something to say. Or nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Here comes Steve Fox. We haven't seen Steve Fox in quite a while, I don't think. But there he is. Hello, he is. Steve. How are you? Oh, you you got to turn on your mic. You got to turn on your mic. There we go. There, there, there you go. Um, this, man's, time. this man's a professional announcer. R right? Because the microphone's right here. <laughs> yeah. Steve, how are you, Steve? I'm doing well. I'm I'm glad you're doing good. I'm I'm doing okay. You know, I just I'm tired all the time. I, I I've gotten this thing where I just go, is this what it's all about when you're 82? You know, if there was a God, wouldn't things get better? Wouldn't it be some kind of reward at this point in your life? And now I'm beginning to realize that reward is dying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I mean it's. I mean, it's just <laughs> things don't get any better. Well, know? let me ask you this. So do you ever get the feeling like you could actually go back, let's say, over to um, uh, Sirius XM or on the radio again, wake up in the morning and just go right in and just do it? Or kind of, do you kind of, is that drive gone or what? I don't know if I, I uh, you know, I, I don't know if I could do it. You know, I'm trying to, I, that's a very good question. I sometimes ask myself that. In fact, it's funny you should bring it up because I was thinking the other day, you know, I used to do a morning show. I'd get up here up at the, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning and I'd drive down. We'd take a cab down to the station and then I'd uh, do my show. And uh, i do four hours without breathing heavy. All right. Mm. And now I think, could I do that today? But, you know, no. I, in a way, because I, I am maybe eight years, nine years away from that, Mm. is more the reason why I can't than if I were doing it every day. If I were still doing it and going in every day, I think I probably could still do it, you know. But I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I, you know, this is like people don't realize what, what I do for a living and what you do for a living and a lot of people in broadcasting do for a living is actually like, a, like a, uh, an athletic endeavor. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you have to keep doing it, otherwise you get stale. And even yeah. though I do this every night, this is, you know, this is just, this is just playing radio. This isn't really <laughs> radio, you know? Well, it is. I mean, you know, like you said, you're, you're at your age right now and you just, you know, 
you're you're doing your show and you're having fun with it. So well, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, I, at times I'm beginning to think maybe I just want to do the show whenever I want to do the show, mm. you know, and not do the show when I don't want to do the show. Because but then you'll miss it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I used to do this thing five days a week, and then I went down to four. And then I went down to three, and then I have another <laughs> one I do on, on Monday, so that's back up to four. You oh, know. man. But then you have your, uh, what, the going to the park? The three oh, that thing. little thing. Yeah, that, that thing is the thing that amazes me. Um, uh, you know, um, I, I, I do this, and I get you know, a couple hundred people watching or whatever. That thing, you get about 1,000 people. <laughs> I watch that thing and I'm and it's and nothing's going on you know uh we just yell and we argue with each other and then that's it you know and that five minute show goodbye well it's the curiosity that's what it is you know it's like wait he's at oh let's see what's going on and then you know yeah. punch right in and yeah. i think that's what's going on is people want to find out what's going on with him yeah of course we can't do it that much now because the weather is just turning oh brutally cold here you know i think that's one of the reasons i feel crummy is because when the weather turns you know uh it it, it just uh, throws you off really throws you off especially here wow yeah well i guess those turtles are frozen then huh yeah the turtles i think the turtles are pro I, do they survive in the winter i don't think so i wonder if that's they a good to, question i wonder if they have to fish them out of there and put them somewhere <laughs> I, I I have to go up and take a look, you know. Cause they, you, move they, they move them to Connecticut. They move them to Connecticut. They move them. That's good. Yeah. No. It, 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 I, I I really wish I knew. Uh, oh, here comes Kevin. I really knew. I if I really wish I knew uh, uh, what they did with those turtles. I'm going to have to go look and see. Yeah. In, in a couple of days, if I can walk that far. Yeah, I've got how far is it? It's it's only about uh, oh, a half a mile or something like that where we walked oh, up wow. to, you know. But uh, I've been having foot problems lately, and uh, I'm not being able to walk like I was, you know. So, uh, hmm. what the hell? Somebody come and carry me over there, and I'll be happy to do it. Here comes Brian Neary as well. Wow! Wow! Um, there we go. There he is. Hello, Brian. How are you? A thumbs up? Is it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that isn't that, isn't that the Trump thing? The thumb up? Yeah. <laughs> this is Brian's Trump eating thing. right now. He can't talk. Yeah. Yeah. What are you eating? Blackberries, blueberries, and apple. Oh, oh. lovely. I'll lovely. Be right oh, over. lovely. Sounds good. Yeah. So, Steve, what have you been up to? Same old thing. I mean, I'm just, you know, still at KQED and um, driving around the car a little bit. I mean, I got, I'm like Brian in a way. I have a classic car. Um, he probably has a million of them, but um, <laughs> no, it's a Chevelle, uh, Chevelle Super Sport. So, oh, nice. yeah. Now, you, you're, now, you're a KQED. Isn't that the car you stole, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> somebody oh. stole a, would you believe somebody stole a, a car? Right where I live. In oh. Connecticut? Yeah. I imagine that. I well, can't believe it. Everybody, drink, that's because everybody's dying to get out of Connecticut. <laughs> so. uh, no, but I was going to say, Steve, uh, you, I can't remember. You, you work on the television side or the radio side? The radio side. The radio side. Yeah. That station, off and on, has been number one in San Francisco. And it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing to see that. That thing is just like... It's public broadcasting. It's not like a commercial radio station. Because it's the only real radio station left now in yeah. the Bay Area. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's about all it. All the other ones are all computerized but usually or changing you, you, formats. You, or... you get a non-commercial radio station in any market, and they're like number 30th in the market or whatever. This thing's been number one for how many years now? Gosh, I mean, it's been going on for a long time. Even, you know, back when they... Uh, uh, what was it? Um, I think the last ratings, though, I think, I'm trying to remember KCBS. who. KCBS. KCBS may have beaten you out or somebody like that. Yeah, but, for but, some reason. But I you're number two, so big deal. Yeah. You know? 
But what pisses everybody off in the Bay Area, all these other radio stations, what really pisses them off is the fact that you are doing that and you're not commercial. You know, so you're, you're, you're taking away ratings from them that they could be getting to make money. But do you remember back in the day that uh, when non-commercial stations were not even rated? And then you're people right. Used to, you're yeah, right. And then people used to say, oh, I listen to KQED. And you're like, yeah, right. You know, you're sophisticated and you're all this. And <laughs> it really was all that. I mean, it was, you know. Well, it was, it was just a few, a few years ago that they started rating the, the, in other words, they would only do the commercial stations because the commercial stations were the only ones that paid the rating companies to do ratings. Yeah. And so they figured they're not going to get any money out of a non-commercial station, so screw them. We won't include them, and this is just for commercial stations. So that's, you know, because when I was at the Live 105, I don't think KQED was even rated at all at that time. No, no, not you at know. that time. Yeah. It was just recently that all of a sudden it came out, and it's like all of a sudden shot to number one. It was like, wow, people really, really do listen to that. Well, thing. it's also <laughs> it, it's the only it's the only public broadcasting station in the United States that enjoys those kind of ratings. Uh, yeah, and I think it's because it's San Francisco, you know. Yeah, and it's an yeah. entirely different kind of market. Yeah. <laughs> It really is. It's just something else to see. But anyway, I'm enjoying it over there. So oh, no yeah. complaints. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, at one time, I ran for the board at KQED. Oh, you, really? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't win. You know. <laughs> well, because it, it the fix is in over there. <laughs> I don't want you to get into this, but the fix was right. in. I don't know if it is anymore. But, you know, they decided who they wanted to have on the board of, uh, of supervisors or board of directors. And uh, if you didn't fit what they wanted, you just didn't get in. And I was, a, I, I was yelling and screaming about the way they were spending money and stuff like that because they had, they had, this, they had the biggest soundstage in Northern California. Really? Yeah. And uh, everybody used that soundstage. They not only made money doing shows out of there, they made money from advertisers coming in and doing car commercials and things like that. And then all of a sudden, one day they said, we want to move into really nice digs. So they built this whole new place. And it cost them a fortune. And I, my yelling and screaming was, why are you doing this? You have a perfectly, you have a perfect facility. It's capable of doing everything you want it to do. And you're getting rid of it because you want to get into this fancier looking place. You know, to me, when you're public broadcasting, uh, really the digs don't matter. You know, it doesn't, nothing has right. to look good. You know, you can, you can be in a Quonset hut for crying out loud. <laughs> But do good programming, you know? Right. And it doesn't take really nice digs to do good programming. But no, they had to have it, you know. And so I was fighting against that, and that's what lost me the uh, place ah. on the board of directors. Well, you know they have, they, how did I, how can I put this? They rebuilt the new digs now. And, well, um, it's been that long that they rebuilt the one they <laughs> built. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they tore it to, you know, down to bear whatever it was and then rebuilt it back again now it's called the crystal palace and um you have to look it up uh, in, uh, online wait a minute the, who calls it the crystal palace is that what people call it there kind of to be sarcastic oh, I, or, that's or, the name of it yeah, they're talking about it, i mean in a way yeah that's what they're calling it because there who was the guy down in uh, southern california had the church was it olstein no it wasn't osteen uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah, now. I know what you're talking about. And he had a thing called the Crystal, the Crystal Cathedral or something like yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's still Buck, there, isn't it? Buck yeah. Owens? I think so. No, not Buck Owens. Buck Owens was a country star for crying out <laughs> loud. Oh, well, how do I know? Close. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. Buck Owens, great, uh, great uh, evangelist. <laughs> uh, my, by the way, though, my favorite country artist of all time. Because you can't, couldn't beat his lyrics. Is everybody familiar with Buck Owens here? Yeah. Yeah. He, my favorite was, I got the hungries for your love, so I'm waiting in your welfare line. Oh, God. A great song. 
Um, but oh, um, boy. Anyway, so but the, the, it, it, KQED is an amazing success story. Yeah, I'm happy there. But I really the, am. With the it's big horrible place. The big horrible story over there. <clears throat> Robert Schuler. Robert Schuler. Right. Uh, You're right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buck Owens. <laughs> no, but the the, um, the the big story in San Francisco, of course, is what happened to. Um, oh, KGO. KGO. That's terrible. oh my gosh. That's terrible. That yeah. was just something else. I mean, to see that uh, they just let the guy do the show. The guy's saying, "No, I'm. Why don't? Why do you want me to continue doing the show?" And then cut right in the middle of it and then switch the format. So, yeah, I mean, I uh, what happened? In case people don't know, KGO was for a time the most popular station in San Francisco. Most and then when they cha- then when they changed the way the ratings were taken, they suddenly realized they hadn't been number one, and these guys were over KQED, and and they went down to something like number thirty in the market. Oh yeah. Well, wasn't, wasn't KGO the most powerful station in the Bay Area too? One of them. One of them. Yeah. One of them. You okay. got that, and KMBR I think was another fifty thousand mm-hmm. water. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was driving the truck, as soon KCBS. as I got done with you in the morning, I was flipping over to KGO. Yeah. Well, I mean, KGO, um, the thing that was so, uh, did they change, actually change the call letters of the station or is it still KGO? I think it's still KGO. Okay. I, because, I'm not 100% positive. Because so. there are very few stations in the country that have call letters with three letters. Mm-hmm. Right. All right, and that goes back to the old days. In the beginning of radio, they just gave out three calls, three call letters, and KGO yeah. was one of them. KPO was another one in San Francisco, which later K-Y-A. became which later became KNBC, and then later became KNBR. Mm. What about KYA? Yeah, Quite KYA Francisco. was another one in in San Francisco, and uh, I don't think it exists anymore. No, so all those three gone. call three letter call signs have pretty much disappeared, and to get rid of one is to get rid of something that's really a legacy. So I'm glad maybe they kept the call letters and they just call it something, you know. I don't know if they if, if it's still there. I'll, I'll have to look it up. But um, I know KFRC is still around. Yeah, but KFRC oh, is... I remember Dr. Donald D. Rose. Yeah. Or like that. <laughs> well, it's KFRC FM is KCBS. So, oh, really? Oh. But they kept the call letters for some reason. Yeah. There was something very unusual in uh, in New York radio. They, this didn't hold true anywhere else in the country. But in, in the very beginning, when FM was first created, uh, uh, and they were giving out FM uh, frequencies, a lot of the stations that were here already went and got the free. Like, for instance, uh, KABC, which was uh, ABC. Got, which was 77 on the dial, went and got them a position because in those days, if you got an AM FM radio, you had a strip of the AM stations and then a strip with the, um, um, uh, what do you call it, the FM stations on the bottom. They would get a frequency that fit directly below their oh, yeah. 77. And so several of the stations here, all their frequencies were exactly placed. If you had the AM FM dial, right that on top was so of cool. each other, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, How they did that is amazing. Well, I mean, I, I guess I, their branding now is called the Spread Eight Ten. Yeah, it, it's a porno station. KGO the Spread. Yeah, it's a porno <laughs> station. <laughs> there we it's go. Still got KGO though, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, well, to begin with, in am I right? But in California, they just voted to not have betting. Yes. So how yeah, does that shot down? How does that now affect their format? Well, no, that 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 was betting online, yeah. and that was well, casino. Uh, that was Indian casino betting online. So it was it was all related to the Indian casinos getting support from that betting. And I, I knew a couple of uh, people that belonged to tribes, and even they were saying no. Because, but, but, you know, here's my question. If they said no to that, and that's fine. You know, I would agree with them totally. 
But uh, the fact is that they were st still had a situation in which um, uh, uh, it was it was going to be dealing with gambling, like this station was going to be dealing with gambling. But people like who are some of those those online uh, yeah, DraftKings draft and all that sort and of so stuff on. would be legal, but they're still doing it anyway. Wait, wait a minute, they would not be legal now. They would. They're not legal now. Oh, okay. they're doing it. I I use it. I how used do, to. Well, how do they? How do, it, how do they do that? If they can't, do I don't it. know. But I've 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 used it many times, and I just decided to stop using it because I kept losing. <laughs> well, I think it. I think it's a really crappy idea. I really think it's yeah, a terrible well, and, thing. And this, this last, those last two propositions had to do with Indian casinos and betting online, and they were supposed to be supporting. The were homeless supposed to be support to the tribes, mm. but if you noticed, there was about eighty tribes that were against it, because they believed that it was just a few casinos that were controlling the whole thing, and those few casinos are doing quite well, and they they fought against it as well. But the the money that was going to be going back to the tribes was about this much, and the rest of it was going back to the casinos. Oh, so okay. they just said, "Why bother?" And the the few tribes that were for it were behind those casinos. Wow. Okay. So, so that's that's, that's why because I spoke to a couple of people that I know were in you know were in American Indian that belonged to quote unquote tribes up by Middleton, mm -hmm. California, and they said, "Hell no, we're not voting for that thing. It's a bunch of bull crap." But what happens now to DraftKings? If are they allowed in California? No, but they do it. But if they're not it's allowed like in California, else. then how is somebody like KGO, the spread, going yeah, to be able to... just talk about it. I know they talk about it, but they're uh, also planning on the fact that they would get advertising from all these online betting organizations. And if they, they still do it. If they can't exist in the state of California, how are they going to make money? What are they going to advertise? I don't know, but you watch, uh, you watch uh, the mo the game tonight, and it's advertised there, but it's national advertising. But you still get it here. Yeah, but I mean, like for instance, here in New here in New York, uh, they do betting in uh, uh, they they have like DraftKings and everything working out in New Jersey, but they, we don't have it so that you can do it here in New York. So they have it that if I go online right now and I go to DraftKings, right, and I try to play anything, I can't because I'm in New York. There you go. That's you. Uh, well, wait, right let me, hold on a second. Well, hold on a second. Let me just see here. Well, wait a minute. I, I know what I can do. I can pr just bring it up on my computer here. Let's see here. And I can do it with, uh, with DraftKings and what's the other one? They're both the same company now. FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, DraftKings International Series, uh, DraftKings, DriftKings. Oh, I put in DriftKings. I put in DriftKings. Yeah, that's what I never understood. What the big difference? There was this whole online betting thing, but people are doing it all the time. It's it's illegal, probably, but they're doing it. Okay, DraftKings. I've won and I've lost, and I just. I just got to the point where I thought it was a pain in the ass, so I just stopped doing it. Well, here's the official site, uh, and it, it, it says sign up, let's say, for Sportsbook. It'll let me. Huh. Huh. <clears throat> like I said, i got to sign in and everything, and they keep sending me emails. Why don't you bet today and stuff? And I keep deleting them. Yeah. How do they pay you? In cryptos? Oh no, yeah, they're just I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But you can probably, but you know, it's just yeah. all it is is just numbers ball. back and forth. Thing. Literally, you bet mm -hmm. what you win usually, and then when you run out, you dump more money in there. But I just got tired of doing it because I, 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 I really I, suck at betting on football. <laughs> well, I, I, your, your phone will be a casino. Yeah, and, and even I did it a couple of times for the, uh, what the hell's the race, the Kentucky Derby. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I've done that for the Kentucky Derby. What's that called? That's called uh, Spires. Yeah, Twin Spires. And I'll ask it not to. Have, have there, I'm already logged in, too. 
You know too much about this gambling. <laughs> and I can well, I can bet on horse. Now that one I won. Yeah, I, I probably got I, I probably got twenty five or thirty bucks in there somewhere. I think what I'll Whoa. do is I'll go on to DraftKings and I just lose every penny I have. That's oh, what I'll, I'll oh no! If you sign up now, you could probably get five dollars free if you bet five hundred. <laughs> Matt and I find something terribly wrong with that. By the way, somebody mentioned crypto. Yeah, that's. Did you see that? Did you see who's getting sued? FTX. Well, this FTX situation, okay. Everybody and their mother is. Everybody who was hired by them as spokespeople, because yep. you remember they did ads on television, are now being sued as well as being complicit <laughs> in this Larry. in this so called what they call Ponzi scheme, and Larry King, and Larry David is one of them. Yeah. Hmm. He did a great ad on the Super Bowl, if you and may he remember. Said, nah. In the nah. ad. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> he probably will get out of it just simply because on the ad he says, No, I wouldn't have anything to do with it, basically. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was saying. Oh, great. Yeah. But this guy who had FTX, it supposedly is like one of the biggest bankruptcies What's in strange recent memory. Is you, you hear about that and he the guy that ran the whole thing or whatever he says i don't know what happened all of a sudden it was there and all of a sudden it was gone well what the hell i mean billions of dollars all of a sudden just poof well if you've got something that doesn't have any real basis in reality right apparently one day people are going to get wind of that and it's going to go poof. that was the big warning with crypto mm -hmm. well that's what they were expecting wasn't it you know, yeah, yeah. I never understood crypto. So here's one big one that's really gone poof. Well, I don't understand crypto. I, is it money? I what is it? What is it? How do I buy crypto? How do I pay something off in crypto? How do I pay my landlord <clears throat> off in crypto? He would have to accept it. That's he would have to accept thing. crypto. Yeah. And then he would, it goes into his crypto account? Yeah. So isn't there, there's a country down in... Um, it's the country of crypto. <laughs> no, there's a country that actually does everything in crypto. They tried it and they're doing it. But oh, oh yes, yes, Venezuela, I think. Venezuela, yeah, well, of course, there you go. Or Bolivia, yeah. one or the other, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, somewhere down there, they, they turned their whole their whole system into crypto. I wonder what happens well, there. Well, now it's crapto. Crapto. Yeah. El crapo. I mean, terrible, terrible. Uh, you know, um, my my kid did that. I don't know how he did. It. I asked him about it. He says, "Oh, you just buy this and buy that, and it, it <clears throat> multiplies like a rabbit." And I'm going, "Okay, but it can go away like a rabbit too, can it?" I, I don't know what he did, but I, you know, if if it were simply a monetary system of you give them money and then you you can get your money back. You're not making an investment. You're simply, you know, when I put money in the bank, I'm not really making an investment. I'm just putting it somewhere where I can then write a check on it or, you know, use a, a credit card or whatever. But it, 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 you know, there's there's cash being... Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. There's, there's no cash anywhere. It's just numbers. I, yeah, I know. Otherwise, they're putting everything on like a thumb drive and saying, don't lose your key. Yeah. And yeah. Everything is on this, and and you don't know where that. You yeah, know. Well, but I just never understood how crypto worked. I mean, they always talked about crypto mining. What is that? You know, go out in the backyard and I, get a shovel. I heard about it. guys who yeah. spent a couple of thousand dollars on computers so they could do crypto mining. Yes. yes. What do you do? Put a Remember little. Remember that hat? one guy that that lost the key or what his key number or whatever it was? He lost it, and. He had millions of dollars in crypto, and he lost it, the key. Yeah, I wonder who gets that money if he loses it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure that's out. That's the big question. Yeah, and it might be nobody because it probably was no money. You know, it's it's right. it's, it's like I, I don't know. I, you know, but I never I nope. never understood it. Never made sense to me. You yeah. Know? Uh, now uh, I'm an old guy, I guess, and I'm not with it. You know. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I don't get it. But I don't get it. To me, 
You have a dollar in your hand, and you give that dollar to somebody else, and they give you like some juju bees or something, you know? Yeah, or you get fifty cents back. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your change. Uh, but with that, I mean, I don't. Do you get change? I don't know. You know what is one crypto worth? I, I, I just never. Nobody could ever explain it to me. Brian. And, and, huh? It's all numbers to me. <clears throat> I get a check and it goes into actually two accounts. They're all just numbers. Mm -hmm. Then I owe a bunch of numbers for my house. Then mm -hmm. I owe a bunch of my numbers for for insurance. And I owe a yeah, bunch of yeah, numbers. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, I understand what you're They're saying. They're all numbers. But, and you're absolutely correct. But you can also go to the bank and say, give me so much in numbers. And they'll give you these yeah. bills. What do you do with cash. that? What well, do you do with cash? You well, can go, what I've been doing with lately is I pay less for fuel. Mm, yeah. And I can pay significantly less for fuel than the amount that I buy at a time. Right. I've been going to the bank and just getting cash out yeah. because I can get it for 15, 20, 30 cents cheaper. Mm -hmm. But you and know what's I'm funny? I'm taking it off my All debit right. card. It doesn't matter. So I go get cash, and then I pay cash for fuel. Alan's you know, what's funny is they still have they still have those signs out front that say, "Oh, they will not take anything over you know over a fifty dollar bill." And I'm like, "You're going to charge me hundred dollars for gas? I can give yeah. you a hundred dollar bill." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, Alan. So you know, I don't know crypto, but the banking industry is kind of strange too. Think about this: say you have a, a bank account that's worth fifty thousand dollars. It's all electronic. I mean, they don't they don't have a stack of fifty thousand. No, I I understand that. Name just sitting there. Yes, I understand that all our money is basically just a number. Electronic. It's all yeah. electronics, just a number, right. but it is substantial in that if I want to go to down to the bank and I want to go to my ATM, correct. Yeah, I can absolutely. put in a number and I get that number back in bills that I can then use on the street or whatever although granted i if i have i've had two hundred dollars in my pocket now for the last month and not spend any of that because everything be nice. every other way i've been using you know my my uh, uh, apple pay or i've been using the, my credit card same or whatever. thing i've right. done the same thing but just tonight i'm going on a trip down to la this weekend and i know i'm going to be paying a, for a lot of fuel so i went over and i got 320 bucks in cash just to get me down there and back, just for fuel. Mm -hmm. On a Harley? No. no. <laughs> I'm pulling a whole trailer full of instruments and stuff. Oh. Um, but, you know, I know I'm going to be burning a lot of fuel, so I went out and bought cash so that I don't have to pay so much for the fuel. Right. But so, so that's what you do. Yeah, you know, with crypto, you, you can't go, go get that. Can't go to a bank and get dollar bills, can you? With crypto, well, you can't take crypto and put it in a in a in a uh, in a, a gas a, a, right. a, a gas. It's got to be a crypto bank. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but I mean, are there, are, are, do you know any uh, gas stations that take crypto? Hell no. Yeah, Hell Venezuela. No. Yeah, yeah, I guess Venezuela. I haven't seen it here in the Bay Area. I mean, cool. I think there's. Uh, yeah. Do you, uh, Steve, you don't understand this whole crypto. Well, thing, no, because right? what I'm saying is that, or what I was th just thinking is that uh, certain people, when they want to get money out, let's just say, I don't know if you can say cash out, but Venmo or one of those places will go ahead and just deposit that into your account, from what I heard. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, for instance, I have Zelle. And sometimes yeah. Marjorie, well, she has some bills that I've got to pay, and she pays for half of them. So she'll send me a thing by a Zelle. Yeah. And this is money just going back and forth. I'm not having just any physical. Just a number exchange, the same but, thing as your bank. No. But I still don't understand with crypto where that money is, you know? And, and, Funny and how you cash out. Hmm? Yeah, because some, somewhere along the line, you're paying U.S. currency for crypto. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. You but can't. Being taxed, you don't have right? crypto. If you don't have crypto, you can't buy crypto. Except but you have I think U.S. currency for crypto to get started. I think crypto actually can go up and down in value. So if you yeah, have a hundred crypto shares and you paid a hundred dollars for it, 
And next week it could be worth a thousand. Whereas correct. If you put $100 that's dollars in the bank. It's never going to be worth a thousand. That's correct. It has a. It has. A, it. Ha that's my my kids. You know thing. Right. In, in, in other words, so in other words, the worth though. the worth of crypto. But what I'm saying is that you have to use. You real currency to buy the crypto. That's right. Yes. Right. And somewhere that real currency is going somewhere. Where? Well, it becomes crypto, but where? Right. It just, scheme. And Somebody's then, and then away if I it. say, okay, here's my thousand dollars. <throat> Give me. Let me have whatever crypto I get for a thousand dollars. Where do I? First of all, where do I deposit that money to get my crypto? Well, you take it to a crypto bank and you get it crypto brokered and all that, but then yeah. it becomes crypto and it's no longer cash. Right. Okay. So then it becomes crypto. How and do then I then it starts how, multiplying? Uh-huh. It does but but you're it's based it's based on the worth of crypto. Correct. Right. But right. now it's in the crypto chain. And it keeps going and multiplying in that realm it's, oh, it's car, I, hear, I hear there's a gas station that accepts crypto on mars i mean i've never even seen a gas station that accepts it uh -oh. i get gas all over the bay area nobody says anything about crypto no cash or credit crypto lawyers must be rich well crypto yeah. crypto the whole other horrible thing about crypto was is that the criminal world was using crypto as a matter of holding on to their money? They sure the they love that. Yeah. yeah, they love to. Web. They love to have all their drug money in crypto, because it was something that couldn't be traced. Yep. You know, uh, which is also scary. It's not insured. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's not insured. So anyway, one other thing that happened today, of course, is that um, um, Nancy Pelosi announced uh, basically that she she's stepping back uh well, she's well, stepping uh, she's gonna have to step down as speaker of the house obviously but right. she's stepping back from even becoming a player uh in the congress you know how old is she she's gotta be close she's 82 82 she's 82 and yeah. uh, i think for my money has had a pretty immaculate and interesting career Probably I mean, one is, of the most famous careers. Well, yeah. at, at, when she was in her 40s, she was a housewife. And she went to being the Speaker of the House. You know, yeah. how, what what a success story that is. You know, now like her father, I think, was in politics. He was a congressman. Uh, and that's where she got the urge for it. But she she decided once, she, once it was empty nest time, I got to find a job. Hey. I'll go to Congress. And she went to Congress and look at what she did. You know, it's an amazing career. I uh, think I would spend my the rest of my days on earth well, going uh, after the asshole Republicans that, that said her okay. husband went down to the Castro and picked up a hustler and it went. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. It is. But it, but that's not the the point that I that I that I make and the, and how I feel about the whole thing. Is that she? Um, she has been a, 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 an important part of this country for the last couple of many years. Absolutely, working under about three administrations, and and she. Um, I, to, uh, well, the first time I ever was made aware of her was when I was working in San Francisco, and I had a good friend. Her name was uh, Nicole Boxer. She's Barbara Boxer's daughter, and. Uh, Nicole uh, told me about her good friend, uh, Alexandra Pelosi, you know, and I said, oh, and, and, and she says, and her mother's, you know, and I got to know who Pelosi, the Pelosi's were. And everybody who knew the Pelosi's had nothing but wonderful things to say about them. What great parents they were, what a great family they were, and all of that. And that's why I always got irritated when, you know, it's okay to say, okay, I don't agree with, Nancy Pelosi's politics, but to then try and degrade her, you know, uh, because she wasn't this horrible person. She was this very good politician, you know, and it uh, just always bothered me that people went after her like that. Be and then I got to know Ann Alexandra Pelosi, who was a very good documentary filmmaker, and, and it was a good family. Turn off your mic, would you please, uh, Jeff? because there's a lot of noise coming on your side. 
And I just, it just always irritated me when I heard them go after her on a personal level, you know. And then you got this. Well, who's this asshole who's taking over in the in the in the Congress or trying to at least? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was saying, uh, Jeff, could, j hit the hit the mute button, would you, Jeff? Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah. Turn off. Turn on. Turn on. Uh, turn on your mute button. Kill your audio. Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, um, uh, 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 but I mean, she, uh, uh, he, today, I think today, not today, but yesterday or something, said, well, we, we're going to fire Alexandra, uh, we're going to fire uh, Nancy Pelosi. Well, I'm sorry, you're not firing her. You know, that's not the way this thing works. You know, she simply is not going to be the Speaker of the House. Anyway, and what where did what he happened? go? What happened? He waved goodbye, and that was it. <laughs> that was interesting. Should I be insulted? But anyway, so I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad to see her go. I think maybe it's her time. You know, I mean, sometimes you can stay a little too long at the at the fair, and uh, but she, uh, let, let's all give her credit where credit is due, and in spite of the fact that you may not agree with her politics, I mean. Uh, she was a very decent, honest person, and and was always known as such. And, well, she's leaving on a high note, which is good. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I and you know I I just you know I always I always heard heard nothing but great things about the family, in spite of the fact, of course, the father was gay, but you know that whole thing. You said Brian that made you mad. No, I just laughed. Huh? I... No, they, some memes I'm remembering of the, the incident. Well, I mean, what happens is, I'll tell you what happens. Here's the problem. Number one, if he were gay, nothing wrong with that. Okay? All right? But forget about that because the reason you're saying he's gay is because you think there is something wrong with being gay. You know? Okay. So let's start with that one. Okay? <laughs> but more than that, when you start any kind of rumor, and then you just let the rumor happen. It doesn't even have to be true. Somehow, it doesn't wash off. You know? Now, uh, there would be nothing wrong if he were gay, but he isn't. So, and and you, you think that by saying he's gay, you're somehow demeaning him, making him less than he is. And, and what does that say about your party and what they think about gay people? You know? I mean, it's, it was amazing. Well, you know, Pelosi's from your area up there, Steve, and it's up yeah. there, your area, Brian, and your area. Well, I, well, we got a lot of Bay Area people here. We got Kevin as well. You know. Yeah, what about this? Is there some huge snowstorm coming, right? This weekend? S the, you mean a giant uh, snot storm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. I uh, The reason I say that joke there, which you probably didn't find funny, but I have to tell you a story. We used to do a thing in radio called Rip and Read. What you would do is you would, uh, you'd be a disc jockey and then while the music was playing, you'd go off into the next room where there were these teletypes and you'd rip off this uh, hour at a glance, right, that was coming across the wires and we called it Ripping and Reading, the news. And then we'd play the news theme and then you'd come on and you'd do a little bit of the news. And I am reading the news, and you read it cold because you've been doing all this other stuff, and now you got to do the news. You don't have time to sit there and read it, okay, ahead of time uh, and practice it. Uh, and so I you start reading it, and uh, I hit this. Uh, I'm reading it one day, and I'm reading it, and, and you know, uh, you, you just read what's on the printed page, right? And the printed page said that there was what it, what it was supposed to say is um, uh, Klamath Falls is going to be hit by a giant snowstorm. The only thing is somebody misspelled it. <laughs> and I actually read it on the air as snot storm. <laughs> so. Remember, I know we've talked about this before. Remember the, the airplane that didn't make SFO runway and their Asian names? Oh my gosh. And, and they rushed the Right when this happened, the China Airlines, it, you know, you know, SFO is like into the water, the, mm -hmm. and it sort of hit hit the edge, 
and crashed a little bit and uh they said that the they had these asian names and so <clears throat> one of the i know channel seven what was it steve like channel, uh, seven? channel two channel two channel two yes yeah. and here are the names and like the, the captain is captain fly too we low, too low. <laughs> we too low like that. yeah we too low or something they have these names and holy fook yeah, and they read the name straight on. Yeah, it, that was yeah. bad. Yeah. Bang Ding Ow. There was a bunch of them. <laughs> what, 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 what was it? Bang D Ow. <laughs> they were saying, naming a flight crew. Oh, I came up with all these. It was like, what? What the hell? <laughs> they just read them with a straight face and just moved on. And then, yeah. It, but, uh, yeah, good old days of ripping and reading. Uh, what is it exactly you do, Steve? Uh, do you do news or do you do a show or uh, what? Well, uh, I'm the announcer on the station. So when it comes down to, you know, what shows are coming up next, things like that. Now, I'm pretty much the operator of the whole thing. But you're announcing at the same time um, all the funders, everything that's going on, you know, so, who's supporting so the station. So basically, you're the interstitial stuff. Yeah. That goes between the shows and whatever. Right. Coming right. up next on KQED will be whatever. Now let me ask you this. I and I want to I always had a joke about NPR stations, also nonprofit radio stations, that the announcers all talked a certain way. And it was like they were trying not to announce. In other words, it was like tonight on KQED. Yeah. Jazz at seven o'clock. You don't do that, do you? No, no. I'm actually <laughs> myself. You got, you, you got too good a voice to do yeah, that. Yeah, the voice is good. He's gonna, yeah, he just talks normal. That, I, that's all I do. I, I'm just conversational on the station. And, you know, I was on music radio before. Yeah. And it was just, you know, a totally different beast. And then you're on this. And I'm just going with the flow of what's happening and just talking to whoever's listening. And they're listening. And, um, you know. I always get emails and whatnot from people who really know who I am and um, the real last name. And I don't use my real last name on there, but um, but they said, hey, you're on KQED. Oh, my God. You know, and goes on with the whole thing and says, we listen to it all the time. So and my boss is she says, you're love your delivery on there. This is great. I said, well, thank you. You know, can I get a full time job? You know? <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm right now, I'm just, uh, mm. um, part-time. So part, what, what's part, but what amounts to part-time? How many hours a week? 15 to about 20. Yeah. 15 to 20 hours. Well, why only part-time? I mean, with your voice, hell, I'd make you the voice of the station period. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hire me? <laughs> well, I've talked, I've talked yeah. to you, and I had just never have gotten back to you on it about reading some stuff for us, you know. Oh. You know. Yeah. Uh, there's, and there's a lot of money in it. I've got, like, maybe, oh, I don't know, two or three bucks I could throw your way. Yeah, I've some cryptos. Yeah, I'll store. pay you off in cryptos. <laughs> right. Now the GabNet he, book, same thing. Now, yeah. now you can now buy he, stuff from the GabNet store. Uh, look oh, yeah, at, I can trade out. Look at what showed up. The uh, the starlet of uh, Gabnet. The she's the monster of Gabnet. What, what is she? She's grown up. Yeah, she she no. has. What? She's asking. If, she's asking if I can make her a strawberry smoothie. I want one. Say no. Hey, I'd like a strawberry like smoothie. Mommy makes those every couple of mornings. Marjorie makes me a smoothie. You know. Can you ask that from Jason? Okay, I'll try. After I'm done with my friends. No. Yes. Bye. No. <laughs> Bye. We're almost done. We're almost done. That's <laughs> just get the week. Oh, boy. Isn't it wonderful? Anyway, do you, do you have any kids, uh, Steve? No. Never been married. No kids. No, no kids, no marriage. Oh, good. You're lucky. <sighs> yeah. You got away scot free. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for so, now. Did you do? But, how old are you? Um, gonna be turning sixty. Really? Wow, that's right. You said it before. Wow. Yeah. I tell you, you, you black guys just don't age. I'm you, Indian. You, oh, you're Indian. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, you Indians don't age. <laughs> <laughs> 
kids. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, so you've gone 60 years without getting married or having any kids. Is there a reason for that? I mean, did you uh, on purpose or you just the I'll, idea? Hmm? I'll say I'm a confirmed bachelor. Um, I was in a relationship just a little while ago and um, that didn't quite work out too well, but I, she was riding on my coattails and you know, with what I told her in the very beginning, I said, do not, you're not going out with me because of radio. So just don't even associate that. You're going you, out you, with me to go out with you, me. You know something? I always got very paranoid about women who would come on to me. That they weren't coming on to me because, hey, I like you. You're a nice guy. You're terrific. You're, you know, I find you sexy or whatever. But that they, it was the radio thing. Yeah. And so I was always very paranoid about that. And any time I even got the smidgen of an idea that this person was only hanging around me because I had the radio show, I dumped them immediately. Boom, like that. You know? Well, that's what ended up happening because I ended up leaving one of the stations that, and because I was working at a station over here in the East Bay and KQED at the same time. And I got out of the station here in the East Bay. And that really, uh, that's where everything kind of went. Well, you know, somebody, people have often said, how, to what do you attribute your success? Because I did pretty well in the Bay Area, you know, yeah, you did. especially I did well here in New York. Uh, and I said it was not having kids because I didn't have to sit around and figure, you know, I could make decisions in my life about what mm -hmm. I was going to do with my future without taking into consideration that I had f four mouths to feed, you know. So because I didn't have that, I mean, I had wives, but, you know, we, they were willing to go wherever we were going to go. They were along for the adventure. Uh, yeah. But I didn't have to worry about a family that I had to support. And I remember, you know, just walking out on a job because I didn't like, I didn't like what they were doing to me. And I didn't want to take it any longer. And my wife said, well, what are we going to do now? And I said, something will happen. And something did, you know, but you wouldn't do that if you were, you know, a, 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 you know, if you had kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you find right. that, you find that, don't you, Brian, now that you have kids in your life and so on, which you didn't have to deal with before, that you're you're more responsible for, you know, what you're doing with your life. You know, don't just make yeah, rash I, I, decisions. I I was going to Vegas every two months for about three years. So, yeah, I don't think I could do that with kids. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, I see. We'll bring up the theme here. Boy, Jeff, good seeing you tonight, friend. You're terrific. Sorry about the interruptions. Uh, the drunken women at your house. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fun. Steve Fox, thank you so much. And I'll be in touch, too. I want to, you know, okay. talk to you about doing some stuff. And um, uh, let me see here. Uh, Kevin. Oh, just brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Love having you here. Kevin uh, and Brian, you're terrific, too. And I don't know what happened to Alan, but he went goodbye. And uh, you'll, you'll get paid in Gabnet back bucks. And Steve, bucks. call us more often, Steve, because <laughs> you're great to have on. You know, you're a great part oh. of the discussion. You make a well, great. Thanks. I, I watch you all the time. And, you know, and, and when I get the chance, I'm like, ah, OK, tonight I'll come in. Yeah. Well, so good. great seeing but, you. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. OK, there they go, ladies and gentlemen, our citizen panel for tonight. That's it. We will see you again, uh, let's see here tomorrow, uh, right here. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. Give him a call. He's at GabNet Live on Skype. GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. Uh, we shall see you again, as I said, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, and I like to say this with a great deal of love, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>